Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In today's video, we will talk about AWS SSO, which is AWS Single Sign-On. And I will give you a demo as well how you can enable SSO and what all features it provides you. So to start with, I just want to talk a little bit about IAM, how organizations were managing their users before SSO. So suppose an organization have a single account. So they can create users in IAM, we know that, and engineers can use those ID password to log into those accounts. But as AWS grew, customer space or kind of uh, workload in AWS grew and they needed more than one account. So suppose the organization has three accounts and they want their users to give access to these accounts, they have to create or they had to create these users in each account. So account A, B, C all have their uh, these IAM users and pass uh, groups and this engineer had to remember all those ID password to log into this account and think about when you have hundreds of account. So one way which companies used is kind of assuming role. So suppose they created these users in one account and then they created role in other account and created trust relationship between these two. So user in a account A uh, were assuming role in account B to log in there. So that was uh, kind of sold but again, you have to create roles in each and every account. You have to manage the permissions of those roles. You have to make sure that who can assume that role. So there are a lot of uh, manual work around it. Other thing what organizations asked, hey, we have a user base in our on-prem uh, Active Directory or in any external identity provider. We don't want to create these users again in IAM. So how we can do that? For that, AWS kind of come up with an identity provider, external identity provider with IAM. And I have talked about that and give a demo as well in my different video. If you want, you can go ahead and watch that, how you can set up a Azure Active Directory with an IAM and how users in Azure Active Directory will be able to log in to your AWS account. So in this case, you uh, create an identity provider for your each account, individual account in Azure Active Directory, and then the users will be able to assume roles which you defined in your accounts. So that's how uh, users were maintained either by external identity provider or within the user, within the IAM. Okay, so what is AWS SSO? AWS SSO is a cloud-based sign-on service that makes it easy to centrally manage SSO access to all your AWS accounts and cloud applications, specifically it helps you to manage SSO access and user permissions across all your AWS accounts and for your software as a service or your SaaS applications. Now, what are the different features it provides? One is it helps you to create and manage user groups in AWS SSO. So you can create all your users and all your groups in AWS SSO. You don't need to create those users separately in each account. You can manage it through AWS SSO. Suppose you have a new user coming in in organizations, you can just go ahead and create that user in your SSO and it will, and you can then assign it to different accounts and you can assign the permissions to that particular user. Similarly, if a user leaves your organization, then you don't need to create or you don't need to go and to the different account or delete that user. You can just go to the AWS SSO and you can delete that user from there. So it's as simple as that. Second, it integrates with AWS organization. So one of the key requirement to enable AWS SSO is that you should have an AWS organization. If you don't have AWS organization created and when you try to enable AWS SSO, it will give you this message and it will ask you to create an AWS organization first before enabling AWS SSO. So uh, the third thing is like it also integrates with external identity providers like in IAM you can use external identity provider like Azure or Okta. So similarly with AWS SSO as well you can integrate external identity, identity provider like Azure and I will be giving a demo in a separate video on that that how you can uh, change your identity provider from instead of AWS SSO, you can use your external identity provider as well. Uh, so those are the uh, main key features about AWS SSO. Next, let's go to the uh, console and I can show you how you can enable AWS SSO.
okay so i have logged in into my aws console and you can see that my aws sso is not enabled yet so one thing uh, i want to uh, point it out that you can enable sso is in any of your region so you don't need to be in north virginia region i'm just doing it in that but uh, you can do it in ohio region or asia pacific region any any region that works for you uh, and the other thing is like if you enable in whatever region you cannot enable it any other region so it, it it will be enabled only once and it will be enabled only in one region whatever region you will pick it up second like i mentioned that you need to have a aws organization so for me i have already i already have a aws organization created where i have uh, one ou where i have a couple of accounts under it and this is my management account where i have logged in but if you try to uh, create this uh, or enable this SSO in a known management account, it won't allow you. It will give you an error message saying that you have to go to your management account where you have your OEWS organization created and you can enable it there only. Second, I just want to show you that right now I don't have any role with the name SSO. So once we enable the SSO, what is going to do that it will create a role in each of the account under my organization. So including this master pair account and all the child accounts. So let's go ahead and uh, enable AWS SSO. Okay, so my AWS SSO is enabled and on the dashboard, you will see some basic information like in which region this is enabled. You will get a user portal and this portal link or URL your users will use while logging into their uh, accounts. Uh, and if you want, you can customize it as well. If you click it here, you can provide any subdomain, uh, suppose clouddeepdive.awsapps.com slash start. So you can give a name and it should be uh, unique that if no, nobody should be using that particular name. So if you want, you can customize that as well. Other than that, next you will find AWS accounts here and it will fetch all the accounts from your AWS organization. Uh, so like I showed you that I have my cloud deep dive account, my master account, and then uh, my OUIT. Under that, I had three accounts. So it's uh, fetched all those accounts from there. So next we have permission sets. Permission set define the level of access that user have to their assigned AWS accounts. And it's basically a group of policies. So what we can do we, when we cl click on create uh, permission sets. So either you can create a AWS manage policy permission set. So you can give administrative access, billing access, uh, DB access, whatever you want, or you can customize this permission set as well. So if you select cust custom permission set, so you can select one or multiple AWS policies, or you can create your own inline policy and you can assign that as well. So for now, what I'm going to do, I'm, I will give uh, uh, AWS administrator access so I can choose multiple policies from here or like I can say that AWS EC2 full access or support user RDS full access, I can do that as well. But for the simplicity, what I'm going to do, I'm just giving the administrator access, administrator access to this user. So we'll click on next. Uh, here you will see the session duration. Uh, that duration is basically when that user will log in into that account for how long that user will be logged in uh, before they logged out or from that particular console or from that account. You can go any value from one hour to eight hour and uh, in the custom duration you can suppose say three hour or five hour or seven hours but it has to be maximum of 12 hours only so let's keep it one hour click on next and then we'll do create so my permission set is created next you have applications uh, in application you will uh, add a new application like any third party application you have or you want to create your own application so you have a lot of options like you can use Asana, you can use uh, Adobe Connect, uh, you can have uh, some of the Amazon base Business Connect, all those applications you want. If you want, you can connect and give access to this application to your users. Next, you have users and group. They are similar to what you had in IAM. You can create groups. Uh, suppose I'll create a developer group. And here you can add users. So right now we don't have any users. So I'll just leave it as a dev group. And then if you want, uh, you can go ahead and create your users as well. So suppose I'll say demo dev user, and I'll give you the email. I'll give the email address at cdd at gmail.com, cdd at gmail.com, name cdd, name cdd, 
I'm just kind of giving some random thing here. And then if you want, you can add them to the group as well. Or if you don't have any group, you can just stand create, create a standalone user as well. Uh, other thing I forgot like here, you can generate one time password so that the user can use that password to access or you can send out an email to them for those uh, passwords so that they can set up on their own. So right now I'll just generate one time password so that we can use it. Click next, next, uh, check all the information and then you can to add um, your user. So this is the information they got it. So uh, you will get the user portal, you will get the username, what they have and then you can get the password as well. Just copy it and put it in my notepad uh, and then you can um, share it with, with your user as well. So let's close it. Okay, next I want to show you that in IAM, when we started, there was no rule, uh, was, role was created for SSO. Now if we go to the roles and if we say SSO, you can see it created a new role, which is AWS service role for SSO. Uh, and it has a trust relationship that anyone can assume this role. So next what we are going to do that we'll use this user and we'll assign it to one of the account. So to do that, what you will do, you'll go to the AWS accounts and there you will choose the particular account. Suppose I want to give access to development account. I can choose that and say assign user and group. Uh, so here either you can assign an individual user or you can assign a group. So I can assign this to a group so that any user in future, if I add, I can just add it to the group and they will have the same access to this account. Then I can click on next here. You will choose permission set. So right now I have only one permission set, but you might create a separate permission set and based on uh, requirement, you can select all those permission sets for this group or for this user. Click on next and we do submit. So it will configure your account and what it will do behind the scene, it will create a role in that particular account. And I'm going to show you that how that uh, would look like. So let's log into uh, that console. Okay, so I brought up a new console on Firefox and we'll use that uh, use URL portal link and it will ask for a username and password. So our username was demo dev user and it will ask for password. As this was a new user, so it will ask us to create a new password. Let's do that and set new password. And here you will see that what all accounts uh, this user is associated. So if you assign the same user to multiple accounts, you will see the list of all those accounts. And in, in addition, if is this user is provided access to any other application uh, uh, through this single sign on, those application will also be listed here. So let's click on this account and you will look at option that you want to access the command line or the management console. So we want to do management console. So let's go there. So we have logged in into the console and you can see that uh, this user has assumed a role AWS reserved SSO underscore administrator access underscore some number. And if we go to IAM and uh, go to roles, you can see that for SSO, there are two roles were created. The first role was created uh, when you enabled SSO. So uh, as part of SSO, it will enable or it will create a role in each of the account like I mentioned. And the other role was created when you assigned the permission set to that uh, particular account for that user. And this permission set will have uh, all the policies what you have assigned for that. This role basically will have all the policy which you have assigned to the permission set in your master account. And uh, under the trust relationship is saying that it can uh, have the tag session of the assume role with SAML where the string is equal to this. So uh, basically this is the role which the user has assumed while logging to this account and under that role it's defining what all uh, policies or what all permissions that role will have. So it's similar to like when you assume role from uh, logging from one account to another but here you don't need to manage this role it's managed by uh, AWS SSO on its own. So that's all about AWS SSO folks. Uh, in my next video, I will be talking about uh, how you can uh, 
integrate your AWS SSO with your uh, external identity provider and we will be using Azure AD. So if you like the video, please hit the like button and put a comment if you have any question. Uh, please do share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more videos on AWS. See you in the next video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.